Hey everybody, the Johnny Cage here, welcoming you to another edition of Friday Night Skype. Joining us today is a guest all the way from Serbia. I got it right this time. Yes, the, indeed. <laughs> the most lucky one. I'm learning so much about world geography from doing this show. But how's it going? Yay, many claps. That's not enough. Woo! More claps. <laughs> <laughs> all right, stop clapping. Uh, <laughs> so demanding, jeez. <laughs> So how's it going, man? Yeah, everything is fine. You know, doing my usual thing on YouTube, uploading videos, and having fun, basically. Yeah, you have a lot of videos up there too, man. You've been you've been piling through games. I was actually watching your playthrough of uh, Tekken, Tekken Four last night because I'm a big fighting enthusiast, but I've never really gotten into the Tekken series. Do you play any other uh, fighting games besides it? Um, I played Dragon Ball. You know, the Budokai series, yeah, basically. Yeah. Ray, PlayStation we, 2. We were talking about that. And I played a newer fighting game called Blaze Blue. I don't know if you heard oh, of yeah, that. I, Blaze Blue. Mm -hmm. I actually have a Guilty Gear for the PS2, and they're kind of similar of sorts. Yeah. It's very Japanese-ish kind of you know, fighting games. But I see them get played a lot at like tournaments, at conventions, actually. So... Definitely uh, an interesting game, but one that probably a lot of people in the mainstream haven't played. It's it's no Street Fighter, that's for sure. Okay. Still, okay. still a fun game though. So what are you what are you let's playing right now for those out there interested? Well, right now I'm uh, let's playing um, the Final Fantasy IV Complete Collection. You know, for the PlayStation Portable, basically. Oh, right, right. And yeah, so far it's going good, I guess. You know, trying so my best, basically. Sure. So far, so good. Yeah, you're able to record off the PSP. We were talking about that a little bit last night. How do you how do you go about recording off of that? I use Remote Joy and Fraps. Oh, if that yeah. makes sense. No. <laughs> kind of. I mean, I'm not very technical, but if any of these guys know anything, chime in. Nope. 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 <laughs> General failure across the board. I don't right? understand. Like, have you have Fraps on your PSP? PSP? That's it. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's uh, Remote Joy. So it goes to the US, USB port, you know. It just shows the screen, basically. No mm -hmm. sound. Without any, oh. any... It's not the real way, but it's a way, you know. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's necessarily the real way whatsoever, but yeah, if you can and, make it work, you can make it work. Then just the screen pops up and Fraps shows up, and yeah, that's how that goes. Fraps can record the footage and the sound together, basically, so you don't have to worry about... Um, putting the sound together with the footage to match it up, basically. Okay. okay. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, playing Final Fantasy IV, is that probably your, your favorite of them all? Because it's definitely... You could go in all sorts of controversy with... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really game. hard to... Well, my favorite, favorite one would be Final Fantasy VI, but the best one is Final Fantasy X to the international version, if you heard oh. of that. Well, yeah, we're all, I know me and Genray, we definitely are huge fans of, of Final Fantasy X, so. Uh, and ten two. I. And 10-2? Ten 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 two. Two. I don't I know about 10-2. I don't know about 10-2. 10-2 is a little much, but the, dre the dress spheres and everything, and the fact that it starts out with Yuna doing like a Britney Spears dance, I mean. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all, all right I mean. and all, but in, there was a J Japanese re version only released in Japan, of course, mm. And that version, you can actually capture all the monsters, all the bosses, and customize them at your will. Oh, kind well, like in Final Fantasy kind of Thirteen, too. Huh. Yeah. So. I guess we're in then. <laughs> we always <laughs> get screwed. Come in Japan. Oh, awesome. But yeah, my favorite is still Six, as far as overall overall goal. Well, yeah, go. Six is definitely an amazing game. It's. It's funny that you don't see like a more modern remake of Six, like well, on like an actual console, you know, because it honestly it does have one of the probably the best story overall. Yeah. I guess they will make one after Final Fantasy V. I guess you know, no, <laughs> just to maybe. maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just happy you didn't say Final Fantasy Seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Good old Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah, well. No, no good old Final good Fantasy Seven. Good old 7. Final <laughs> Fantasy Seven. Mm, how I love me a good Final Fantasy Seven. It came out for the computer recently. Yeah, for for Steam on Steam. It's on Steam. Really? Now. Wow. 
I don't know how I would enjoy playing like an RPG like that on a computer. Uh, it should be the same. Well, well yeah, hey. it is. I mean, now, now we live in a world where like you can just like you can hook up any kind of controller to the computer. But if it was yeah. a while ago, having and to do it all on a keyboard, that would have not been a cool. I don't yeah. think. And the beauty I, of Steam is they actually came out with this new thing um, where you could actually start playing it on your TV with an actual controller now. So. We should, have, we should abandon the consoles and just join the PC revolution. <laughs> totally. I've been using Steam more and more so. I mean, I'll go on there every day, even if I don't have money, just to look at the specials that they have, because sometimes they have really great deals on games. I mean, if you don't have Steam, you're missing out, honestly. They just... And if you do have money and you have Steam, you'll probably find yeah. yourself very poor very fast. And considering it, Team Fortress 2 is free to play, there's no reason to not be on Steam. Valid point. Is a very fun game. Even if you're like me, who is not a super huge fan of TF2, but you got a group of friends that might play it, it's definitely worth having. Probably the best free game out there. It's fun to play against Johnny because he's so easy to trick stab. Mm -hmm. I'm really bad at that game, but it's all right. Because Utorai is not a very fun or nice person. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm both fun and nice. He's what really are you talking bad about? At video games too. So he needs something. He's decent at. Uh, he at least <laughs> apologizes after he stabs you in the back. <laughs> Just like, sorry, I needed the kill. <laughs> oh, so one question we ask everyone is, what is your favorite game of all time? You have five seconds to answer, or it's automatically E.T.? Well, I said it already, so it's Final Fantasy VI, you know, oh, okay. since I'm a huge fan of Final Fantasy, and that would make perfect sense, I guess. Have you played through, like, all of them, pretty much? I... I didn't finish um, 8 and 5 yet, so... Well, you don't need to finish 8, because 8 sucks. Tell you that <laughs> What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I just have a huge problem with 8. I just didn't like it at all. And, yeah, for me, there's a lot of nostalgia captured in, in 7. And, yeah, so I do have a strong bias for why I like Final Fantasy 7 so much. But then going right from 7 to 8, just the differences that they made, and the characters, and the story, just everything in it, I just really disliked. So... Talk to B Dude and Genray about that all day. Oh, so? They're their never ending struggle to go through every single Final Fantasy. <laughs> so far. But I'm alternating it now with my Final Fantasy and non Final Fantasy. Other than I need to get eight out so I can get Turnips' game back. Yeah. I need I need a break. <laughs> I, need, I need a long break and a stiff drink. No. Uh. So, six is your favorite. If you had to pick, like, a, a, another couple that are really up there, which would you go with? With four, obviously. And then, and then X? Uh, just other games as well, or what? Oh, well, the Final Fantasy series, if it's your favorite. But other games, too. I mean, you were saying that your first uh, system ever was the Sega Genesis. So, any very yeah. popular... And I, I just started playing some Sega Genesis games. I just did a Let's Play of Sonic, so... Um, I saw you played the, the yeah. Golden Axe series, which is definitely a highly regarded series of games for the Genesis. But I haven't really played them too much. If Alta was here, you could tell us about playing Golden Axe, the one that he did. Yeah, for like a half an hour. For a half an hour, <laughs> yeah. But uh, are there any really good, like, because you always hear titles for the Genesis. What were some of your favorite titles for the Genesis growing up that maybe weren't so popular? Maybe Jungle Strike, but... I think that was also popular, in a way, since it was kind of the first 3D game, you know. You were riding a helicopter and doing missions. It's a hard game also, so mm -hmm. I enjoyed that aspect, too. It did and I think I might have played that, or was it Choplifter for the Super Nintendo? I think I'm thinking of Choplifter. But... I, th I think it had a Super Nintendo version, mm -hmm. so that surprised me. And also Pitfall or Pitfall, oh, yeah. or whatever. Mm. That's basic everyday action-adventure games, so that's a lot of fun. True. And, of course, Sonic, and, you know, the great stuff. So, what's so your, um, what, have you played a lot of the Sonic games? Because I hear, overwhelmingly, people always say that Sonic 2 is the best one. So Yeah, I can agree with that. So Yeah. That, that, that game just got it right, you know? Yeah, it really did. Because that was my problem with the first Sonic, was it felt like, after the first world, it was so much more a platformer than a game where you could just, like, enjoy yeah, yourself yeah. and, like, have fun going really fast. Um, but I hear a lot of people say that with Sonic 2, they really hit it on the mark with incorporating all, all the goodness. All the stakes. 
you can just basically run through them with, in two minutes if you are good at, in the game, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's also another if, thing I felt uh, like came down to knowing the levels. Yeah. Hmm. So, what was that? I think you heard of Boogerman. I had lots of fun with that <laughs> game, too, so that's just a oh, weird game. Good old Boogerman. I, uh, I remember running <laughs> Boogerman for the yeah. Super Nintendo a long time ago. Yeah. Um, Never even heard of that game. Sounds well, interesting. You give it a try. You're missing out on a classic. There, <laughs> it's, right? it's very, very good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Of so course. You're, you're kind of like a... It was very good. Kind of like into more action platformers, like after uh, after the fi- Final Fantasy series. That's that's more of your type of games, then. Yeah. Yeah. So action fo- platformers and then horror games and yeah, hmm. basically. Horror games Another... too. Horror games always make for really good let's plays. It's just fun to see people yeah. freak out. Um, Especially when they're blind. Especially yeah. when they're blind. <laughs> That'll be fun. So what's oh. uh, what's your favorite series? Are you a Resident Evil type of guy I... or? Of, uh, um, the horror genre. Well, Silent Hill is better. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm... <laughs> I got a little excited. I mean, here. Resident Evil is good, but it's not scary. It's not as it's not it's not as scary as uh, Silent Hill, mm. as far as you know. Sure, yeah. sure. I too. mean, you get scares, but just for a second and you kill the monster and in Silent Hill you are constantly scared you are just freaked out about that game that every minute or so you are just looking everywhere just something will happen if that just fucked up yeah. <laughs> well uh, that, that's, that's true like, even, even in like Resident Evil 4 you know which is probably the most highly acclaimed one of the series um, even though people say that, you know they changed the formula so much for that game but it's not really that scary. It's most of the time just townspeople not, attacking you. That but it's more an action. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Do you, do you want to talk about a, a horror game that didn't get it right? Was Parasite Eve? Did you all play that? Parasite Eve, really? Because you always hear good yeah. stuff about like Parasite Eve 1, but not Parasite Eve 2. Well, I mean, it's, it's supposed to be a horror game, but it's more like a little RPG. Like a little, like, you know, like a little, yeah. A, a little, little. A little something. A little yeah, of that, a little of this. I wasn't impressed at all. It wasn't scary. I didn't like the gameplay. It was just, it was, maybe want to throw up? I really want there to be a horror platformer. I think that, that, that could work well if you did it right. Horror platformer? Like the scary levels in, uh, in Gex games? Yeah. <laughs> a bit like too much greater extreme. Well, maybe. I was actually, I actually have like, Things thought out for like level design, but like, I don't know, They're just basic things. But well, guess what you're doing after Super Mario 64 hack? <laughs> you're gonna make that game. It could be like Typing of the Dead. Now that's scary. Oh or like God. a or like a Legend of Zelda type game, but horror. Oh, well, Which I hear there are stuff like that. Like I heard Dark Siders 2 is like that. Like, oh, no, it's not. Wait, no, not. It's not horror at all. No, Dark Siders 2 just look like. I was over at a friend's house not too long ago, and to, he was playing it, and it just looked like God of War, with acting as you were one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. That's all it looked like to me. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm not a big that fan is... of like, the God of War games anyway. I mean, there's gratuitous violence and nudity, which is, you know, always a plus. <laughs> if you have to blow off some steam, you can just mash some buttons and watch stuff die. That's or... true. <laughs> but what if I just want to play some DDR, and you know? Dance to like girly J-pop songs. Then you do some DDR and dance to some girly J-pop songs. Oh, just, just then you match the plans and watch dance, dance, Resident Evil. I can just yeah, see yeah. Johnny in like his booty shorts, just giving her. Uh, oh yeah. Good. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Now let's say Typing of the Dead and let's make it with with Dance Dance Revolution, and you have to dance <laughs> zombies to death. <laughs> I like oh, where yeah. this is going. <laughs> We're onto something here. We're on to something. I like where this is going. You guys going. are geniuses. I, I, I like your style. You guys, are, you guys make me feel good about myself. You guys are cool. You dance, dance, friends, and evil. No, no, no one believes. I mean, how they made a dance thing for the freaking Star Wars. Why not do it for Resident Evil? Well, yeah, but that's George Lucas. He'll do anything Whoa. for a buck. <laughs> is that a Kinect game? Yeah, it's a Kinect game. Is it really? Yeah. You're not lie to me. Really? Yeah. Yep. 
Shut your mouth. No, it's not. Yeah, it is, dude. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stab you in the eye. You're kidding, right? I didn't know that. I mean, How did you not know that? Thing that when it came out. Uh, I don't know. What do you mean it was the most talked about thing? I didn't care about it. I know. That's because you live in the South in a tiny little <laughs> town with a lot of <laughs> dead people <laughs> hanging from hooks in your barn or something like that. I go and take a dump outside. You didn't oh. see nothing. <laughs> so, uh, back to the most lucky one. We very much so get on top off top. Yay! <laughs> But feel free to chime in and shut us up at any moment. We also appreciate that. So, uh, a lot of, yeah. uh, we talked about other fighting games you play. Dragon Ball Z. Um, let's see, what else have, do you have on your list? Do you have, like, so many games. Let's just go to your channel. I should have had that up all <laughs> Just time. one moment. I'm just going to go to Just one second, guys. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Why is doing that? I guess we could talk about, you know, the fact that the Wii U has officially been announced, like the release date. Oh, How do you guys feel about that? I, I got an email asking me if I wanted to reserve my Wii U game. Yeah, the same well, here. Oh, my God. We can talk about what is everyone's favorite Dragon Ball Z character. Yeah, nah, I like the Wii U better. Dragon Ball Z's. <laughs> well, we can talk about the Wii U for a long time, and I plan on yeah. talking about the Wii U for a long time. Let's I'm talk sure we can talk about Dragon Ball Z for a long time. I can't. I don't know anything about Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Everyone's favorite Dragon Ball Z character, go, right now. Matt's, Matt's Roshi, all the way. Hey, so, I don't know, I'm still a really big Goku person. Yamcha. Kid Goku. Kid Goku is awesome. No, 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 adult Goku. Vegeta. And my favorite's Vegeta. Vegeta and yeah. Goku remind me of Scar and Simba. In no, Mufasa. King. Mufasa. Mufasa. <laughs> it's been a long time since you've seen Lion King, I take. <laughs> no. Oh, Scar, it's oh you know you know one game that you played that I really love? Uh Monster Rancher Two. Like, when I first started doing Let's Plays, oh. I played uh I played Monster Rancher Advance for the Game Boy Advance, but I have Monster Rancher Two for the PS one. I love that game so much. Such like the Yeah, that's books. also some RPG, basically. Yeah. Very well, good. I mean, I just love it. It's it's one of those games that deserves to get like, as much recognition as like Pokemon did, and I mean they're not too too far off from one another. But I don't know. I guess Pokemon just had better marketing. They had Pikachu. Did you watch the anime? Yeah, I did. I used to watch it every like every morning. Like I think in like middle yeah. school, just like get up and I would I would watch it with Swayzo and Golem and like I forgot what the main character's name was. Ash. What? No, no they're talking about Monster Rancher. Uh, oh, okay, right. never mind then. I was totally out. <laughs> I was confused about that too. I was just going to wait to see what they're actually talking about. <laughs> hang him. Hang him now. Hang him. I mean, who's that guy? And who's that guy that jumps a lot? Is that Mario? Oh, that's the guy. <laughs> that's the guy. No. Yeah, that's the guy. Uh, Skating can jump. He, he, he can't jump. But, um, yeah, I'll have to watch your videos on that too. Is That, that looks like it was one of those classic gotta have it camera pointing it at the TV <laughs> sort of LPs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of on my own. It was, yeah. <laughs> hey, I've been there too. My Mega Man 2 Let's Play was just like that. That's that's passion right there. There you go. You got the high. You got then it. I got the cat. You got it. Got yeah. it. Uh, anyway, all right. So, let's talk so about that, the Wii U. That's... So... Apparently, Generation and Dilly shop a lot at, at GameStop, which I highly disapprove of. But <laughs> I shop there like once, and then they don't stop sending me emails ever since. Then. Once is one time too many, I'm afraid. Johnny, I'm afraid you're gonna be very disappointed. I actually have a rewards card at GameStop, so I get rewarded with points. <laughs> oh, you, you devious bastard! I know. Oh, all right, so. Uh... Let's see. We know that the cheaper version of it, with only eight um, gigs of memory, is going for uh, three hundred bucks. Yeah. And then we got the thirty-two gigs for three fifty. I don't know why you wouldn't want to, you know, dish out the extra, you know, fifty for that many more gigs of memory. But then again, I don't know, like, because I don't even have a current generation system, so I don't know how much memory you actually use. But it seems like if you're going to be downloading movies potentially and putting those on there, then. Uh, Gonna use up a lot of memory really fast. 
Well, not even that. I mean, it's been in the rumbles for a while, but a lot of people know that a lot of the titles for Nintendo are actually just going to be, you know, all digital now. That's where, you know, the game genre is going. So, I mean, once you really think about it, it kind of does make sense to get the bigger console memory because a lot of those games will be just, you know, digital ti- digital copy only. So, Yeah. Well, hopefully it doesn't go that way right away. And maybe, maybe Nintendo won't be so much like the the money-grubbing guys, execs that we got over at PlayStation and, and Xbox, you know? Well, I mean, my PS3 has like 300 gigs of memory, so I don't know how much money-grubbing they are. Oh, no, true. How much, how much of that memory do you think you've used, or have you used? 25. Nice. Well, <laughs> yeah, actually, then that seems kind of low for, for sheer memory capacity, but... Yeah, it just depends on what you put on there. Like, obviously, games, music, videos. You can put a lot of stuff on there. It just really depends on what type of gamer or type of... What are you using your console for, plain and simple? Especially if, like, all the games are going to be digital, because then eventually you're going to come to a point where it's going to force you to choose, oh, well, I want to download this game because I want to play it, but i got to get rid of something. Yeah. yeah. If you had just had discs, all you have to do is be like, well, I'll just put this disc over... Yeah, back I mean, I'm sure they won't have a permanent delete. I'm sure they'll have a cloud or something, you know, I'm talking about to put it in. Cloud storage, yeah. Yeah, but whenever you want to download it again. Well, they've got to. I mean, if they don't, then, yeah, you're going to run into a lot of issues. I still think it's kind of stupid, because with there being virtually no rental market nowadays, well, there is, but, you know, it's not necessarily, it's definitely not what it was, and it's very limited, but, you know, that and... Now everything going digital it seems like there's going to be like very few choices, um, you know, of, of being able to give a game to a, a friend and say, "Here, try this out. Maybe you'll want to buy it then." Because I know that there's been a number of games that I bought just for that reason alone in the past, and to not have that as an option anymore kind of sucks. It's like at the end of an era, really. Johnny, I think you need to grow up, man. No, grow up. don't tell <laughs> me that. I've been to the real world. It's a terrible place. <laughs> I mean, as much as we don't like to see that, I mean, it's probably where it's going to go down because, like, once you think about it, like, we were talking about GameStop. A lot of it has to do with GameStop. The fact that they buy back games for just nickels at a time and then they sell it back at full price, but the original creators don't get any of that money. So it kind of makes sense if you think about it. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it makes sense business-wise. Sure, I can't, you know. Like, so we should put GameStop out of business and go digital. Hey, I'd be, well, no, we should put GameStop out of business, but we should also, like, what you call it, not go completely digital, because I'm still against that, too. I'm just saying it makes sense. What if they gave us the option to burn a digital copy on copy onto, like, a Blu-ray disc? Hmm? Well, and that's the thing, too, where, obviously, there's going to be programs, there's going to be, you know, hacked versions where you can do that, and you could start distributing it that way. You have to be somewhat of a technical expert to do that, and you're going to get in a lot of trouble if you get caught. You're probably going to be able to do that. Just... Download the game, put it on disc, and then here you go, buddy, try this out. There's always yeah, a way. Much. I mean, I remember when the Dreamcast came out, and you could just literally, like, as long as you had a boot disc, you could just burn the game onto just any sort of regular blank CD, and then pop in a boot disc. I still got it, actually. I still got a bunch of games that have been burned for the Dreamcast that you can just play at will. And Me I think, too. I think we the had, PlayStation. Like, yeah, I remember going over to a friend's house, and he had, like, every single game ever made for the Dreamcast. You know, it wasn't, you know, it was illegal, technically, but you could do it, you know. People will find ways around it, is the bottom line, because people are smart like that, and pirates like that as well. That just goes to show you, the world is a fickle thing. (laughs) Support the pirates. Support the pirates. Hey, it makes me feel like a pirate of the Caribbean every time I pirate something. Be like, I am a pirate. How does that make me feel? (laughs) Do you take a swig of rum? You are a pirate. (laughs) Oh... But, all right, so I guess the big question is, you if you've got $350 on you right now, do you buy this on launch day or not? Oh, no. Oh, I'm oh. totally buying the Wii U on launch day. For I'm sure. Too. No question about it. Really? Oh. I will skip work to go and buy it. In fact, work's been pissing me off lately. Like, I, I swear to God, if they fuck with my TF2 season, I'm quitting then and there. <laughs> Yeah, working for Social Blade could be so hard. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm talking about... I'm I know, talking I know, rest. I know, don't worry about it. <laughs> no, they're dicks, though, because I told her, I'm like, okay, I kind of need Mondays to, uh, you know, do a thing. And then she agreed to it, and she's trying to fuck with me and say, not, like, you know, I'm not able to do that, so I'm probably going to quit this Monday and be like, yeah, you know what? 
I'd rather shoot doctors in the face. <laughs> and then just walk out. Just don't. I would rather shoot doctors in the face. Walk <laughs> out. I don't need to explain myself. You should I've know always, what I mean. I always thought if a place is really making me mad and I want to quit, you got to make a scene, flip some tables, and just burst out of there. And like the busiest time of the day. You're really no, you have to somehow screw them over. Like I remember I used to work for this like a fairgrounds amusement park type of thing and we had go karts. And so as soon as everybody left, I was um, telling one of my managers, be like, dude, you gotta let me do this. So pretty much what I did is I took three go karts, took them out of the maintenance check that we had, took the wheels off and actually put it inside the building. So then when I left and then they came back the next morning, they had actually moved back out. But it was hard because the maintenance guys were helping me out and they weren't there that morning and they couldn't fit them through the door. So yeah, that was fun. <laughs> wow, those maintenance guys must have hated your bosses if they helped you with that. Oh, they do. They hated him so much, trust me. Wow. That's love right there. <laughs> Anyhow, so that's interesting. I mean, did you say that you would buy it as well, Dilly? The Wii U? Day one? Uh, no. When um, actually, I'd like to make an addendum to my last statement. I'm only buying it if Pikmin 3 is a launch title, because at the moment, that's all I care about. That's on the Wii U. Okay, valid point. Well, that probably will be. And, you know, we didn't even talk. We were trying to come up with titles that are going to be on the Wait, Wii U. Wait, did I say Pikmin 2 or Pikmin 3? Pikmin you said Pikmin 3. Okay, just making sure I didn't talk up. But anyhow. Yeah, I mean, that will definitely be a really great title. I've never played a Pikmin game, so I can't speak much for the series. But, I mean, it is definitely popular, so... For that reason alone, a lot of people will buy it on day one, and I'd imagine that a game like Zombie U, that we've talked about quite a bit, will probably be a day one launch as well. Yeah, and then it just depends if it's a good game. Like, I still want to see some solid gameplay trailer, not animated gameplay trailer, mm -hmm. actual solid gameplay trailer, and see how much it actually skips. Because when you do something in real time like that, when you're crossing over devices, there's going to be some lag, and I just want to see how bad the lag is actually going to be. That's a good question. I mean, and it you know, it's reasons like that that I think I would keep away from buying it for a while. I probably wouldn't necessarily wait till there's a, a price drop on it, but I probably would wait about two months before I bought it and see what games are really coming out for sure that aren't just uh, rehashes of Wii games. And you know, yeah, like the new Super Mario's Wii U or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean that actually looks cool. I was watching video of people playing that at PAX and. It's a five-player thing, which is really cool. So you've got four people playing it, and then you've got one person using, uh, you know, the the Wii U remote with the screen on it, and they're making like platforms for you and question mark blocks along the way to help you get through the levels. But yeah, because that's what I want to do in my spare time: right? make platforms. I mean, when, when I saw it, when I saw it um, being played, too, I was uh, watching some. I think it was like a family playing it, and it was like a dad with like two little kids. And it was, like, a great thing for, like, the parent to do, to just, like, involve themselves in the game without knowing a lot about how to play the game, you know, and, and taking, like, the controller away from their kids and actually, like, playing a character. You know, they could do something, like, smart like that, you know, that maybe a, a five- to seven-year-old might not really know what they're doing trying to place platforms to help people finish a stage, you know. Yeah, so. and I guess that makes sense, make it more family-friendly. Uh, That's Johnny, all. Johnny, how, how would you feel if you were the fifth wheel and somebody handed you... The Wii Remote for the for the Wii U. I'm like, here you go, Johnny. You need to be the I, I, yeah, you draw those platforms right now. <laughs> I can't do this, right? You make it harder. <laughs> to make it harder. I mean, you well, look at like, the new Super Mar Mario Bros. Wii. That game was like the game of assholes right there. Because it was just like everyone killing everyone constantly. It's like, oh, what you doing there? I'm going to jump on your head when you're in the middle of that pit. You're going to die, man. You're going to be dead. I, that, that is true. That you just like, look deep in their eyes and you're dead. <laughs> I killed you. <laughs> now, I remember I used to play with my sister on that, and she wasn't really that good in it. And so I would either rush through the level and leave her behind, or I would always like pick her up and like try to be nice, be like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna take you through the level." As soon as I saw a pit or a lava pit, I'd be like, "Oops, sorry, I, I threw you in there." My bad. On Yoshi and just eat the person and just like carry them around <laughs> in the mouth all the time. Like, yep, we're gonna beat this game one way or another. Damn it. <laughs> we're getting through we're this We're gonna right have now. quality fucking time here. <laughs> Oh. That's when you were in the nearest pit. It's like, oh, jump off, Yoshi. Oh, uh, I forgot you were in there. Seriously, that game really... Like, I played it once, and I was just like... I don't think I had been more pissed about a video game in a, you know, a long time. It was just like, ah, oh, really getting to me, actually. It was like, this is Mario. It's supposed to be fun. Why am I not having fun? 
<laughs> of the whole hey, family gotcha. together. We're having fun, gosh darn it! Oh. Rayman is also another title I talked about. Another five-player game as well. Yeah. That is something I don't understand. Like, who does Rayman belong to? Is that just like cross uh, platform or cross whatever console or what? I have no idea who owns the rights to Rayman. Ubisoft. The Ubisoft, really? Yeah. Wow, I did not know that. You have taught me something today, Gary. I have have they, like, they, have have they always? Have they always owned it? Have they always owned it? Since the, you of, like, the first one on PlayStation? Rayman? Yes, in your. Probably. I didn't know Ubisoft was around at that time, though. I didn't even know that Rayman, like, was that popular, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, it got popular with freaking uh, the PlayStation release, because it was just, like, a bunch of... It was, like, a different Ray game, Rayman game, apparently, but everybody loved it. It was like, oh, my God, this, I need more. I mean, I think, like, the first two or three, weren't they just, like, 3D platform games, essentially? And, I mean, that's still I... what it is now, but it's it's so much more than that. I mean, it stands out in the crowd. Of, of those, like, 3D platformers, like Gex or, or Glover. Yep. I played the, uh, the one for the Game Boy Color to death, like, just because it had such addicting music, like, especially the second world, like, dun 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 I feel like I just smoked a cigarette. <laughs> okay. It <laughs> kind of came out of nowhere. Good for you, though. Good for you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Most Lucky One. I'm just going to call you that for now. Mr. Most Lucky okay. One. Might want to change your I'm name. I'm fine with <laughs> But, uh, have, do, you, do you play a lot of uh, Zelda games at all? Um, I think I played Link to the Blast, uh, Past a little. Yeah. But, really. Well, I mean, that... you were a Genesis Genesis guy, yeah. so, you know, Super Nintendo was your, your rival, your enemy, your most hated enemy. Well, we didn't have Super Nintendo around here, so... <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Was it not known as the the Mega Drive in, in Serbia? Um, I got my uh, Mega Drive actually from Germany. Mega. My uh, grandfather worked there, and he gave it as a... Christmas present, so yeah, it was a good Christmas. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, any, any Christmas where you get a new console is always a good Christmas. But uh, and of, the games were were all from Germany, so not really. You know, we we had basically a hacked Nintendo around here. You know. Oh, nice. <laughs> nothing, yeah. nothing like getting a hacked console with a bunch of German games. That sounds like a good day to me. <laughs> uh, I take it. <laughs> <laughs> of course you would, Uto, because you're so very German. I am. I am, too. You know, I, I learned so much German from listening to Rammstein. I know so much now. So much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyhow. David, man. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> and David Hasselhoff. Uh, well, that, that was, that's our, our poorly placed segue into <laughs> the possibility of there being a Majora's Mask for the Wii U. And... As I completely forgot about, because they don't play handheld consoles, they did remake Ocarina of Time for the 3DS. So, what do you guys think? Distinct possibility? Very much so. I don't know. You you can you can buy Majora's Mask for the GameCube. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. How how so? Uh, you can get it on Amazon, and or actually, I think we looked on Amazon because I wanted it for I wanted it along with Ocarina of Time. And Master Quest, but they didn't have it on Amazon. But I've seen people own it, and because I know, because like the buttons are the colors of the icons are switched. Like in Ocarina of Time, like the the B button was originally green, but on the GameCube, the controller is red, so they switched it to red, and the start button is gray. So all the icons were switched, like it was for Master Quest and Ocarina of Time for the GameCube. Hmm. That is strange. I never heard about that, but then again, I don't know if it, is it like an official like Nintendo release? Because you, you you think they would have publicized that that a lot more. I don't know. I could look it up. That's true. It just depends. I mean, what, like Majora's Mask came out in '99, right? Or was it 2000? Uh, 2000. 2000. Oh, okay. 2000. Really? Because I mean, it it almost makes sense then, because then the GameCube came out just like a couple years later that they might have just like tacked it on there 
as just like without even telling anyone. But I, I don't know. I should have. I think you would have heard about that if that was true. So yeah, exactly. It would have been a lot more publicized if that were true. Yeah, but I think you know, talking about oh, potential Wii U launch titles, that would be a great one. I mean, there's no end to the amount of fanboyism for Legend of Zelda. And I mean, yeah. we were saying, you know, we were saying rehashes of Wii games, but you know, still, <laughs> that's a game that people would like to see, just like people always want to see a, a remade Final Fantasy VII or remade. I, I know a lot of people were excited that they were, um, they were glad that freaking Wingless Icarus, or not Wingless Icarus, Icarus, that Kid Icarus, the thing that flies, <laughs> the that guy. came out for the 3DS. Yeah, yeah, they were excited that they were. Um, they were thinking they were going to make a sequel for the Wii U, but then apparently Miyamoto came out with an article the other day saying that no, it's like if he ever were to make another game, it wouldn't be for another 25 years. Be like, well, that's kind of a kick in the face to the people who actually like that game. So, <laughs> I I don't know if I've heard anything that great about it. I mean, there were seemed like there was a lot of hype for it, but I haven't I, heard. I heard people say it was really good. Yeah. Yeah, they were saying that the only thing they really didn't like was the fact that the controls and the story, everything else was good. Like the gameplay in general yeah. was good. Well, controls and story are pretty big uh, marks right there, though. Uh, according to Amazon itself, the only Majora's Mask for the GameCube was in the Zelda Collector's Edition. Well, I guess there was, there was one, though, at least. I mean, I, I had a feeling that it wouldn't actually be just, like, Majora's Mask for the GameCube. Because I checked Retro Games enough that I would have probably noticed that. But there you go. Everyone run out and get it for the GameCube. It's actually a very expensive disc, Johnny. It's like, um, I just checked. It's up to, like, 60 bucks right now. That is getting up there. Basically, well, it's apparently less than a new Wii U game will be. Yeah, what are they saying? They're only going to be, like, 40, 50 bucks or something like that? Oh, so what was the rumor about it being 100? Oh, right, we did hear about them being 100, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, I don't think they could possibly be $100. That'd just blow my mind. For yeah. Nintendo especially. I, I think that Nintendo will always be that place where you can go where they're not going to be super concerned about about the their... Well, they are, because they're a business. But like the revenue that they make, they know that they put all of their, their heart and soul into their games and they're not just doing it to make a quick buck. Because we have seen game sales down drastically throughout the past year. And, you know, it's because people are just pumping out shit games. And that's the truth about What's it. This? Every other week, it's like, oh, new Call of Duty, new this, you know, new <laughs> this old franchise that nobody actually ever played. We're going to put out another one. Yeah. Well, that's kind of how I feel about Kid Icarus, to be honest. I mean, I, I, I understand the game is probably really good, but you're talking about a character that hasn't been in a game since the basically the beginning of the Nintendo. You know, funny enough... There has not been a good game in, like, so long. I've actually spent more money on retro games in the last two years than I had on, like, brand new games. Like, the only brand new games I can think of that I actually bought because I wanted them were, like, Skyrim, and that, that's honestly about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, and good old Diablo 3. Woo! Talk about an investment. Yeah. Uh, Skyward Sword. Was... <laughs> Fun. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, Skyward Sword. Like, obviously, like, the new Zelda stuff. And know, then, uh, I don't know, I, I kind of, like, everybody has their own taste, and then, you know, I'm kind of, you know, a current-gen gamer, and I fondly like the Assassin's Creed series. I think not only has the gameplay gone better over the past couple of games, but the story really gets you. If you actually pay attention, it's just one of those things where it's like, wow, all of this makes sense. I could totally see this happening in real life. So I definitely like the Assassin's Creed series. The only thing I don't like about it, though, is how they tend to reuse the overall sandbox world. So there's, you know, pathways you can do your parkouring or whatever. But then a lot of it, you feel like, wow, this was the exact same thing I did, like, in the last game in this area or whatever. So, yeah, that's just my take on it, though. I'm just going to say it right now. We're gamers. We don't pay attention to the story. (laughs) I do. I I like a good story as long as the game. One of my friends... Like, says that's the most important thing in a video game. Oh, that is. I was just being facetious. No. Yeah, well, I think that story has always been important. I'm one of those people that when it comes to music, like, I can really appreciate good music in a video game, but I always find it, like, kind of strange when people are, are, are listening to game music just, like, out and about. They're like, oh, yeah, right? <laughs> I'm listening to the battle theme from this particular game. You know, it's like, oh, okay. Because, yeah, I, I play a lot of video games, especially old video games, where music was super important back in the 8 and 16-bit era. And yet, I, you know, you play a song, I might be able to kind of, like, remember hearing it, but I probably couldn't tell you what game it's to. I mean, 
I, I guess I think the music's just best set in like that moment, you know. I, yeah, I I put a few video game songs on my iPod, but then like when I'm like put my put it on shuffle and just listening to it on like a long ride, and I find that like I don't really want to listen to it then because it's just, it's not the right atmosphere. It needs it needs that, like it video needs that game to go along with it. Yeah, yeah. I listen to video game music like I listen to classical music, so it's all the same to me. Like, what, what's it, what's some of your favorite video game music, Dilly? Um, well, I don't really know. See, don't, you don't even actually, know. I he's the only one who listens to it. You don't even know what he's listening to. I don't, I don't, I don't I only listen to it. All I, all I, the only ones I have are actually sent to me. They're like, they're like remakes of Final Fantasy. Uh, you get some, 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 yeah, techno, think, Final Fantasy, Wub Wub remix, perhaps. <laughs> I, think, I think video game music is the reason why I prefer, like, modern pop music. It just, a lot of the instruments and the way it's made is similar and it's just like the the beat and the drums and the like little explosions sounding instruments that are made artificially tiny explosions scattered throughout yeah. the course of the music uh what about you uh mr most lucky one what have you I like, felt about music and games i like more, more the rock music and the music it, that has a uh, fast beat, so... Mm. Yeah, you don't, don't get really much, you don't get much rock music in, in video games, except for... Like Mega Man! The beginning of Final Fantasy X, when they're doing oh, yeah. the Blitz Ball. I loved that the first time I saw that one. I think. There's some pretty badass themes in the Earthbound. Just gonna throw that out there. Yeah. True. So. Um... Yeah, well, Earthbound's just an all-around amazing game, but, yeah. I it's, still it's, should play Earthbound. Well, you should. I mean, just to play it. Yeah. yeah. That's how I feel. That's one of the best things about being a Let's Player, is that you can play games, and you're like, oh, I'm going to play this for an audience, and, and now I finally get to be able to, you know, I feel like I'm almost compelled to play it then. Not not finish a game halfway through, when you're just playing it for yourself, and you don't necessarily want to, which I, I've been there a bajillion times. Mm-hmm. I've never actually finished... Final Fantasy 2 or 3 on the NES until I last played them. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. That's not that crazy. Never finished. <laughs> never finished Final <laughs> Fantasy 7. Still don't feel that fulfilled about it, but still. <laughs> until I LP'd it. It's because you have the super negative connotation of the game going into it. You're just like, this game sucks, we're gonna have a bad time, let's go. No, I said we're gonna, we're gonna make the best of this, and at the end I was like, oh, well... That's it. Well, that, see, you you hated that, didn't you? I know I hated it. It was terrible. Ugh. I don't. Oh, know. son of a bitch! How can you say such terrible things about Final Fantasy VII? It was not that bad of a game. Over. Well, I just I don't. I can't get into RPGs. I just I don't like trying. I don't like having to buy new equipment and new potions and decide what moves to do when and not being able to actually move around during a fight and attack. Well, That's why if... Souls. That, Souls. or if you want to play a really simplistic RPG that really gets you into it, play Paper Mario. That's the reason why I love Paper Mario so much, because it had the RPG feel, but you didn't feel like you needed to be an expert at RPGs to get into it. It was very simplistic. It didn't overwhelm you with, like, oh, you need to know this, this, and this about, you know, this type of enemy, blah, 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 you know? Yeah, I tried Paper Mario. It's, it's just too much for me. It's too <laughs> oh, so much. Okay. Take it back. It's just too much. I don't know. I, I think that's like that's even better of like um, an introduction to RPGs than you know like Final Fantasy Mystic Quest is even. Mystic Quest is actually kind of a tough game, um, but you know I would I would go with Super Mario RPG just because I like classic retro games. That one yeah. that really got me into to RPGs. Hey, I've heard from a lot of people that even from people that don't like RPGs, so that's a they, they like that game. Well, it's got a great sense of humor about itself. It's got, you yeah. know, it's, it's it's Mario. It, there's nothing too super difficult about it. Um, it's kind of a long game, that's for sure. But a very long game. Since we're talking about Paper Mario, I gotta say, I really hate what they've done with the series. Like, the first one was great. The second one was great. The third one, what the fuck was that? 
What was well, the third Super one? Super Mario, and like I, my personal opinion, I thought it was a great game. You know, another great game by Nintendo with the Mario series, but it wasn't a Paper Mario game. It didn't have that you know feel that you got from every other game. So I'll concede to that point. And then I'm a little hesitant about you know the sticker. Thing, what they're doing with the 3DS. Yeah, I, I don't know about that one. I'm yeah. not going to judge it until it's actually out, though. What's that all yeah. it, it, it's going back to the RPG, like the actual standard RPG, not action RPG, but it revolves around stickers, where I believe the stickers actually give you your power-up, so yeah, you get a sticker for the hammer, you get a sticker for your shoe, and I don't know, right then and there, it just seems to go a little too kiddish, and it's weird. Mm. Alright, well, I guess if you found I this... I think exact what they're doing... doing is they're, like, trying to use the uh, paper aspect more than they did in, like, before. That's why you got the stickers and the fan and all that stupid shit, where, like, before it was just the art style. It had really nothing to do with paper for the most part. Yeah, I could totally see that, but I don't know. Like you said, we can't really judge it until it's officially out, so... Oh, well, I mean, you know, Mario games have kind of been a little lackluster throughout the past decade. I thought Mario Sunshine, when that came out, even though a lot of people love that game now, I thought that was the stupidest thing in the world when I first saw that. I yeah, like, people were always saying, like, like after like a year of it being out, like, that game's really underrated. But... Mm. Well, that's what they say about it. Yeah. Same with, like, Luigi's Mansion as well. Actually, I, I like Luigi's Mansion with... since I got that, but that's just me. Go ahead, Uto. I have to disagree with the lackluster Mario game statement in the last decade, because Mario yeah. Galaxy games are fucking yeah, awesome. Yeah, gonna they say, are. I was going to say those. I mean, they are really... Those games are very good games, but I don't know. I just feel like... I hope they can keep that going. And it seems like they've had to make it like larger and larger. It started with, you know, Mario, up to Mario 3, then Mario World, Mario in the Universe. Where is it going to go yeah. next? Maybe you'll actually Mario in the afterlife. After a while, who knows? Super Mario <laughs> Afterlife. Super Mario Afterlife. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be in heaven. Play. It'll, it'll be now. like Resident Evil, or just like after after Afterlife. Like, what do you do? Then they go to what is it? What is the new Resident Evil subtitle? Can't remember. Hell. Revolution. Hell. You, you go to hell. I have no idea. Well, even then, I mean, I'm not sure if he could do that anymore because technically he did something like that in P- Super Paper Mario. We actually went to Game Overland, so. <laughs> Game Over Land is a dark place. Oh, Retribution. I think. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I'm entirely sure about that. Don't quote me. <laughs> well, it's too late. We've quoted you. We're quoting that sounds, you. That sounds right. Uh, uh, well, I hope it, they can go back to doing like what they did with Resident Evil 4. Although, I think if you play Resident Evil 4, um, considering some of the game mechanics of like first-person shooters nowadays... It hasn't stood up all too well, but for its time, when it first came out, I can see where it was as amazing as it was. And mind you, I, I didn't play Resident Evil 4 up until about like a year ago or so, so I wasn't there when it first came out. But it seems like a lot of people disliked Resident Evil 5 for one because, reason. Like, because well, the, game, the, the game mechanics changed with the shooting. Like you said, you said that like you know Resident Evil 4, with the, the shooting, the shooting, but that's the same shooting mechanic they've had to pass Resident Evil, and that's why that people like it so much. And Five came around. You could like strafe, and you get like quick uh, or quick and quick things. You know, like quick, and quick. So quick that's and quick. like where they make the real distinction between what you know really shine away yeah. from Resident Evil type games. Five was definitely a, a completely different game. Four was like touching on some things and like doing just you know some different things, which all worked, and I really liked with the action buttons and the sequence and stuff like that. But, you got- but then five just you know they went a little bit further, and they probably should have. Well, you, but it was still, it was still a fun game. you got to say that people definitely had to appreciate the fact that you could actually... They didn't have those really bizarre camera angles that they had in the early Resident Evil games. You know, not to mention yeah. the, the cheesy dialogue, for whatever that counts. But we'll see what happens with it. You know, you know I think what turned around with, with 5 was the co-op and the ability to play online. They really took the multiplayer aspect of that game and expanded it. Because like, no, none before ever could you play a Resident Evil game with a friend. Oh, never before. And that's so something that's the- they definitely need to imply with the Wii U, that, you know, with the new um, Smash Brothers, the new Mario games, the new Mario Kart, because you know they're going to make a new, new one for the Wii U, they definitely have to make the servers a lot better so people around the world can play with each other. Yeah, I've heard a lot of issues with the Mario Kart servers in general, and I've seen them firsthand a bit myself. It seems like they are really, like, people tend to lag out, and it can be really hard to start up a match in those. Yeah, but you don't have any idea, Johnny. I, I don't. No I idea. really don't. But, 
Well, I remember sitting at McDonald's for like hours with my DS trying to get a match going on. No. On my Mario Kart. <laughs> you go to McDonald's. <laughs> I went to McDonald's. I didn't have Wi Fi. I need Wi Fi. I'm going to McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I, I, think, I don't think we're going to see a Mario Kart game though for the Wii U for at least like two, maybe three years. We might not see one until like 2015, to be honest. Four months. Mario Kart 7 came out, what, 2011? Like November, yeah, same Mario same Kart as like, like Skyward always, Sword. They always come out like at, towards the end of a console's life. It seems like they're just like there. They're like the one like trump card they have left. It's like all right, when we start losing sales, we'll hit them with the Mario, Mario Kart. Kart. <laughs> <laughs> we'll drive them to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Oh. Or para sale because they had that in Mario Kart Seven. True. Hooray for para selling. Man, I really want to get Double Dash for the GameCube. It's been a long time since I played it, and I don't have enough good games for the GameCube. Uh, I have a really embarrassing story about yeah. did you, like, Double Dash. Did you your pants while playing it? Cause that is <laughs> no, but I, I did cry in front of my brother. <laughs> and that, that was when I was like 10, too. Like, <laughs> and that was just yesterday. <laughs> and maybe, it was, maybe it was like 12. I, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I was 17. <laughs> that was just yesterday. It just keeps getting worse and worse. Yeah, I was trying to get the gold cart, and I was, like, on Rainbow Ride, the last course on the Grand Prix, where you had to do, like, all 16 tracks, and I came in second, and that that lost it for me. I didn't get it, so... And he just broke down. I broke down. He couldn't handle it anymore. <laughs> he retired from racing. Haven't seen him since. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll have a, a comeback tale of the ages, eventually. Or, or I, I, I did get it eventually. No. Oh. Oh, well, because I'm very persistent. Like, I don't care if I, if I just, like... If I like get emotionally struck, I'll like get we get right back on my feet and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do it this time. Even though the controller's all like sweaty and greasy and like, oh, yeah, it's all greasy. I'm eating an entire large pizza. Oh, you just gotta keep going. It's like I'm at Chuck going. E. Cheese all over again. Jeez. It's like, oh god, I'm getting a crab. I uh, remember I also threw the controller and screamed and woke my parents up when I was trying to beat boss battles on Untense with in Super Mario or Super Smash Brothers Brawl. No. That was like the hardest trophy for me to get. <laughs> oh, so Mr. Most Awesome Lucky One <laughs> from, <laughs> from a country that I can't pronounce, bro. <laughs> uh, what's uh, what's the gaming uh, community look like there? I mean, I know we touched on that a little bit before we started uh, Friday Night Skype, but uh, well, what's what's it like there? Do you have a, like a, a large group of buddies? You got like Game Stops in every corner, arcades oh. everywhere. No, nothing. I think there is one arcade in the city and one or two shops where you can buy games. Wow. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's sad. That's yeah. just. Well, that's it's not that sad. I mean, like, I buy all my games. I buy, buy retro games mostly, but I buy them all online anyway. So, at least well, we have the internet now, right? Since well, we can't do that since we are not in the European Union, so we can't purchase any stuff on the internet. That's really? Kind of. We can't. Wow. Learn new stuff every day on the show, I'm telling you. That yeah, in order to that to work, we would need a PayPal account, so we can't make a PayPal account to buy stuff from the Internet. Oh, man, that really sucks, dude. Yeah. I mean, the Internet's like the way of life now, so... Well, you... so we, uh, we are basically stuck a few years before. It's kind of like when you come here, you travel back in time, you know. Whoa. There are still horses on the street that... You know, basically, well, you know what I mean, basically. basically. <laughs> <laughs> there are horses on the street, running wild. That sounds insane. On the street, that, that sounds insane, yeah. The true wild west over there. Yeah, that's Actually, yeah. that's, it's kind of funny, because I remember like a few years ago when I was walking to school, I just saw a random horse on the street. <laughs> I later found out it escaped from a petting zoo, but it was the trippiest thing ever. I'm just walking down the street, like on the sidewalk. Up this hill, I start coming up, a horse is walking down the other way, and we pass each other. I just kind of look at it, I'm like, what the fuck? It says, it says good day to me, and walks on by. <laughs> it's a normal occurrence around here, so it's, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, just another horse. <laughs> just say, another say horse. hello to me. Nothing out of the ordinary here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that's, that's pretty interesting, though. I mean, you're always welcome to come to America and live in my house. You can get a PayPal yeah. account that way. <laughs> Buy stuff on the internet. Yeah, yeah. buy stuff on the internet. Throw it out there. there. Oh, man. But, anyhow. So, uh, yeah. Anything else? (laughs) Uh, Pirate is coming up for the Wii U. Oh, new stuff coming out for the Wii U? 
by Ratatouille. You heard that? Heard of that? No, I have not heard of that. Um, basically, by Rata is Devil May Cry, just sexier. Oh, is this like, is this the new Devil May Cry with the new Dante no, in it? No, 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 it's it has the same mechanics as Devil May Cry. You have basically a female protagonist fighting uh, angels. Oh. So in Devil May Cry, you have a male protagonist fight devils, and there you have a female protagonist fight oh, angels. Oh, wait, we're talking about Bayonetta 2, aren't we? Bayonetta 2, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh yeah, and I heard like a lot of people were really mad that that was a Wii U exclusive for some reason. Like there was a bunch of hate for that. That makes no sense, actually. So was it, it was really for the Xbox and PlayStation 3, and now it's a Wii U exclusive. It's not. It, it makes no sense to me. Huh. Yeah, a lot of people were super mad about that. I haven't played the game, so I wouldn't know. But apparently, somebody's up out upset. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I would love for exclusive ability to come back. I mean, I think that's what really makes systems stand apart. And back in the Super Nintendo and Genesis days, I mean, that's what it came down to. It was like, do you like the games on the Genesis or the games on the Super Nintendo? And and that was it. That's how you made your choice, you know? Well, in a way, I kind of like that, kind of don't, because obviously if you have a system, then, you know, you get, I guess, more of an experience because it was made specifically for that system. But I also know that I'm kind of ex- upset by it because, you know, my 360 ended up crapping out because of the stupid red ring. And because of that, that I couldn't actually play the Gears of War series, which is you know a really good FPS in my opinion, and so that's kind of where it kind of shows where it's good but it's bad, especially when the game is on a bad system. And yes, I'm calling the old 360 a bad system, not the new one. The refurbished ones are actually pretty decent, but the old ones, I mean, come on, like 90% of those broke in like the first three months. Yeah. Just come on. Uh, that's, that's true. A lot of them did break. I mean, yeah. But I, I don't know. At the same time, I think I like exclusive ability just because. It helps for competition because people are going to be wanting to get those really awesome titles. If you got a title, it gets coming out for every system. You know, I think that leads to lack of innovation, and people aren't just developers aren't even going to care that much. They're like, we're cashing in on three systems, guys. But we don't got any shit. <laughs> That's but pretty I, much about it. I brought my PlayStation Three just because of Metal Gear Solid Four. Yeah. So that was a good reason to buy one. Yeah, I mean. It it was the end of the series, basically. Now they are ju- just making um, prequels, as far as I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the, the Metal Gear Solid series has always been really strong, for the most part. I mean, I haven't played it very extensively, but, you know, everyone loves it. So. It's very good. You have very crazy boss battles, and, you know... Basically, you can choose if you want to sneak through it or just shoot, shoot whatever. They've heard that's a lot. Four hour cutscenes. Four hour cutscenes. Four hour cutscenes. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, that that that, that too. Yeah. That too. Yeah. Well, I've also, heard, like, I've also heard like the Hitman games are a lot of of that as well, where you have the choice of either being able to stealthily go through a stage, or you can just go in guns blazing. But I don't yeah. know if anyone plays Hitman here. So. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I, 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 like, I figure that fall short. I had, it's okay though. I have like the Hitman trilogy collection or whatever for the PS2, but I can't play it because I don't have PS2. <laughs> what is up with like you and Alta buying games for systems that you don't have? <laughs> you don't have oh, yeah. I have a PS2. I've had that game forever. I just can't play it anymore. Oh, all right. Well, I guess I'll let that slide then. I have Double Dragon for the Master System, but I don't have a Master System. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. No, damn. Well, that's just the random game in the collection I have. Hey, it's it's still yeah, it's a game though. Well, if you ever get a chance to buy yourself a Master System, yeah, no I, game. <laughs> there you go. You got a game for it already. What's the Master System again? What are you guys talking about? I've never gotten that. Yeah, Sega uh, Nintendo, basically. Yeah. Sega. A lot yeah. of people don't know about it. It wasn't very popular in America, but it's like when Nintendo came out with the original Nintendo, Sega had the Master System. But yeah. most people in America don't know about Sega until the Genesis came out. Yeah, we don't speak of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, it was one of those like really low-key type of things. I don't know. It was really popular in Europe, though. Uh, uh, but, anyhow, I guess that's pretty much all the time we have for uh, now on Friday Night Skype. 
I want to thank the most lucky one. That's a one, the number, not the not the <laughs> word, for coming out and joining us. We'll leave a link below to his channel. Go check him out. He's done a ton of games, all sorts of games that are really, you know, good quality. And if you're a PSP owner, really love those games, uh, check him out because I don't know too many Let's Players that do uh, PSP games. So definitely worth checking out. Guys, as always, we didn't do an introduction today, I just realized. Huh. We all have the introduction, Johnny. Just you know who's here. Yeah, we know who's here. You guys know us already. We're all friends. Yeah, it's like cheers. Yeah. yeah, we're just some people that talk we're for like an hour. No big deal. Anyhow, thanks a lot for joining <laughs> us, guys. This has been the Johnny Cage. Signing out for FNS. We'll talk to you all next week.